Today we're going to be talking about some natural treatments for Giardia infections. Hey folks, Todd Mansfield. I am a clinical herbalist here from Byron Bray, Australia. And today I wanted to talk about a reasonably common parasite that I see here in the clinic. I live in a subtropical climate. It's pretty damp, it's pretty warm. We do see a decent amount of Giardia, particularly if people are spending time in the woods, you know, off the beaten path, living a bit of a wilder life. And you know, there's some wild people up here for sure. <laughs> but you know, you even find it in temperate climates as well. They might refer to it as beaver fever in more temperate climates. The transmission route, the vector source would be fecal oral, so poop to mouth. The intermediary there is frequently water, so contaminated water. Here in Australia, a lot of people live rurally, a lot of people are living on tank water, so that's water that they cut off their roof. So animals on the roof, booping, winds up in their tank, they don't filter it properly, which is a huge concern. Toxic tank water, you know, that's what got me when I moved to the subtropics years and years ago. That <laughs> set me on this journey. More temperate climates. Again, it would be people spending time in the bush, camping and drinking unfiltered water from, uh, you know, streams and rivers and ponds and animals, you know, living in the same environment that have Giardia and they're passing it on. So let's get into the article. There'll be a link in the description below. There's some wonderful, wonderful little uh, images here that can help. Um, this first one's just a little scanning electron micrograph of Giardia and Giardia, you know, with a few others, that's definitely a bug that we want to completely eradicate. That's probably not so common. Bacterial overgrowth, even candida, reduce, rebalance, make sure it's playing fair, make sure it doesn't have all this space that it can kind of grow into and cause damage. Giardia has got to go. We got to kill it and we have to confirm that it's gone with a follow-up stool test. We're going to be talking about that today, making sure that it's eradicated. If it's not eradicated, hop back on the protocol, keep working through those herbs, make sure it's gone again by a follow-up stool test. Got one patient that I can think of, originally put on very strong herbs, not my recommendation. I go kind of a different route that we'll talk about. Didn't see great symptom improvements. We jumped them on this uh, approach, some of these herbs that we'll discuss today, a couple other little kind of tweaks to the program. Saw significant improvements. Tested, still there, back on the protocol, feeling better, caught up with them a while ago, total resolution, retested, Giardia gone, feeling like a million bucks. So if we're talking about some of the top symptoms of Giardia infections, I frequently see diarrhea, I see weight loss, I see abdominal cramping, malabsorption symptoms, that's particularly if it's gone on for a while, and, and that's really the kind of crux of the matter if Giardia isn't treated. Failure to thrive in children, it's a pretty cu acute infection. People know they have a bug and you know they're, they're actively trying to resolve it. People don't just live with acute Giardia symptoms and, and not deal with it. So if you suspect that you are infected with a parasite and you are experiencing acute symptoms, I would recommend getting a stool test. Here in Australia, most doctors will recommend a DNA-based stool test. It's called a PCR stool test should be covered by Medicare, should be free, and it's screening for the kind of top four or five parasites and the top four or five bacterial pathogens. Thankfully, Giardia is one of those parasites, so pretty accurate. Don't tend to see false negatives, meaning Giardia is there, but the test doesn't find it. I find these tests pretty accurate. Good to confirm what we're treating and good to follow up. Even if you're feeling like a million bucks, total symptom resolution, I would confirm that GRD is gone. If it's not, even if you're asymptomatic, I'd persist with treatment. That would be my recommendation. So let's jump to some natural treatment options. I will be recommending dietary intervention to help with symptoms, dietary intervention to help with treatment. I will be recommending herbal medicines and there is always this little room where we can kind of increase the intensity of our treatments if we need to, if we're not getting that resolution. So with the dietary uh, recommendations for, to support symptoms, it would be more of a high fiber diet and a low fat diet. 
And again, that's because Giardia lives and reproduces and does all its damage in the small bowel. Higher fat diets can just run straight through people. So they can make people feel worse, more nauseous, more diarrhea, more abdominal cramping and pain. The higher fiber that can help to kind of bind to these little protozoan parasites, flush them out of the system, it can help bulk up that stool a little bit, slow things down a bit, get a little bit of breathing room so we can get ahead of the, uh, the infection with active treatment. Some of the dietary recommendations for treatment would be things like crushed fresh garlic. Use this all the time. I've got a video on treating methane SIBO with crushed fresh garlic if you want to know more about that one. I do use this and I will use heavy doses not pleasant, not easy to do. Mix it in a little bit of honey, although that might trigger symptoms. Any way you can choke it down. It's gotta be freshly crushed. Really crush it up, dice it, however, and consume it immediately. So important. And then the herbal medicines, the actual active treatment, my preference would be liquid herbal medicine. So here we have a choice. We can go one way with liquid herbs and that would be more of the alkaloids. Berberine would be the really big one. Or we can go down the polyphenols and the plant tannins. And I just have to thank Dr. Jason Horlack so much for this insight. It has changed the game for me um, back in the day. And you know, he's a total trailblazer. So props to him. <laughs> I prefer going down the polyphenols and the plant tannins originally. I will do two weeks, short, sharp, high dose. This is an acute infection, chronic infections or chronic disease. It's that low and slow. You build the foundations, you get the momentum. Acute infections, blast it. Hit it hard if you can tolerate it. It might even be something like seven and a half to 10 mils two or three times a day. Top, top herb here, pomegranate, absolutely fantastic. It's astringent, it's antimicrobial, it is full of these plant tannins. It combines beautifully, beautifully, beautifully with guava leaf. It's a little bit of a lesser known herb. I mean, most people don't even know about pomegranate husk, but it's starting to get a little bit of traction. <laughs> guava leaf, you know, it's almost unheard of, but here's the kicker, and this is what I love about guava leaf. If you look at the literature and you look at the kind of studies around guava leaf, you'll find that a lot of these kind of traditional cultures that live in climates where Giardia is prevalent and they can grow guava, they are turning to guava as a medicine to treat these conditions, right? It's a traditional medicine. Beautiful, fantastic, really well tolerated, very, very specific for, um, for Giardia and really a good place to start combined with pomegranate. I might round that one out a little bit if we've gone down the polyphenol route to you know include something like clove, thyme, oregano leaf. If we really wanna kick things up, oregano oil, just to kind of hit it quite hard, that's a possibility for sure. Maybe cinnamon, you know, if we can fit it in and then maybe addressing some of the symptoms like nausea with, uh, with a little bit of ginger, just to kind of settle things out. On the probiotic front, I haven't found a huge benefit to probiotics. I might consider spore-based probiotics, so some of the bacillus strains, that, that, that'd be a new addition to the clinic in the past year. Might consider Saccharomyces boulardii during, definitely after to help heal up that small bowel. That's the second phase of treatment. Resolve, eliminate Giardia, heal up the bowel. And I do find that that piece is missing when people come to me, they say, look, I had Giardia. I might have taken antibiotics to get rid of it. Never, never been well since. Like I've gotten rid of it, that's gone. I can't digest anything. And then we test them, they've got leaky gut. We heal up that gut lining. Sometimes it takes a long time to get that lining healed. It's a process. Um, and then once we do, most patients feel better. You know, their food tolerance goes up, their energy goes up, their nutrient status goes up, just vitality is so much better when your gut lining isn't permeable. No more leaky gut. If we wanted to go down the berberine route, which is definitely a choice that people have to make, going down the alkaloid route would be a high dose berberine herb and the 
Big Mama, the sledgehammer, the herb that I almost never use is Coptis. Might use it twice a year when I really need to bring out all the guns. Tastes absolutely foul, really hard to take, really, really heavy duty herb, really, really effective when we need it. It's akin to like a natural antibiotic, right? So probably not as much damage to the gut microbiome as, you know, a broad spectrum antibiotic. But, uh, you know, we're starting to kind of head that route. So instead of rebalancing and reducing, just hitting it really hard with a herbal med. Coptis chinensis. Barberry would be a big one there. Oregon grape root would be a really big one there. Golden seal, you can't really get your hands on it anymore. It's like just crazy expensive. It's a super expensive herb because it's endangered, hard to grow. And there's one little approach. I've, um, I've used it in the past before with good success, and that is stacking all of the berberine rich herbs on top of each other. So that would be Barbary, Oregon grape root, golden seal if you can get it, and definitely, definitely, definitely Coptis. And we want to warm that up a bit with something like cinnamon or ginger, because those are very cool herbs and they can be really hard to take. A little bit of licorice just to flavor it a bit. So that's my approach to treating Giardia infections. It's pretty treatment responsive for the most part. And then on the other side of treatment, once it has been resolved, definitely tick it off that the stool test is free and clear. I would be working on the leaky gut angle, soothing, gentle, demulcent herbs, the glutamines and carnosine, licorice, aloe vera, slippery elm, building, just getting that whole thing going. Uh, curcumin can be really helpful and Saccharomyces boulardii can be really helpful and then if we're not seeing that resolution of leaky gut I will do a video on this there's so much more to cover here then we'll go down for some more uh, advanced therapies some amino acid therapies can be really big some immunoglobulins can be really big here but uh, we can just save that for a different video so I hope you got something out of this leave a comment don't forget to subscribe like the video that helps so much and if you are dealing with any digestive issues and you live in Australia or New Zealand then reach out to the clinic I would love to hear from you